wages and working conditions are far from ideal. The industrialization process, in some sense, relies on the capacity of uh, investors, of businessmen, to extract from workers uh, more profits than the workers themselves can earn. Wages are too low for both men and women, except at the most highly skilled level. So the result is that the industrialization process everywhere creates a poor, underprivileged, exploited, if you like, working class who live under very poor conditions, who are almost inevitably malnourished, who have very little leisure time and very little time to think or educate themselves. The struggle existed on a lot of levels. I mean, it existed at the level of trying to find work, and that often could be difficult. It existed in the workplace itself, where accident rates were high. It was always the threat of, of layoffs. For many workers, the most disturbing aspect of the new industrial system is loss of control over their own work. Skilled workers are accustomed to running their own shops. A classic example is in steel manufacturing. Steel manufacturing required these highly skilled men called puddlers who would take the liquid steel, mix it properly. They had a number of apprentices who would help them out. As the steel processes developed, their jobs were automated. Automated not in, with computers, but with new machines and new technologies, which allowed their job to be eliminated. So all, all of a sudden you have these guys who had been you know, at the top of the heap, they're not there anymore. By the post-Civil War period, uh, skilled workers, mostly men, could manage to cut their days down to 10 hours for the most part. And they struggled by the 1880s for an eight-hour working day. But the majority of unskilled workers and those working in mines and smelters and mills are working 12-hour days and often two shifts. Women's hours begin to shrink just a little bit as workers began to protest, as unions began to form, as everybody began to realize that neither a man nor a woman who worked a 12-hour day would have any time to spend with family. A second key aspect leading to labor conflict is that in these factories, the control over how work is done shifts to management. And when the steel puddler is puddling the steel, he can say to the manager, look, I'm going to do this much steel. And the manager can't say anything because they're in control. Right? They, they don't have control over it. When you have an industrial process, when you have, say, an assembly line or a more broken down labor process, the manager has the power and they can determine how fast people work, how much they work. So the pace of work in the Industrial Revolution increases dramatically. People have to work harder. Their wages, as a consequence, start to go down.